everyone. I'm Donna Bush with your CID TV News Brief on this Monday. The National Emergency Operations Committee held its annual hurricane exercise on Monday morning. Deputy Governor Franz Manderson was joined by his senior team of civil servants who head up the teams that prepare for before, during and after storms. It's really important every year that we practice what our plans are. We all work together. We have about 18 emergency support teams under four different clusters. And it's critical that we all understand what we will, how we will work together, but also what our own responsibilities are. I think it's really important after 2020 to realize that you know, several emergencies can happen at once. We've seen it in the past. We saw it very much in 2020 with the landfill fire as well as the um, uh, COVID and the hurricane season. So it's important that we test concurrent activities at once. So yes, we'll have a hurricane, but we'll also have another emergency and that the emergency responders have to think about both at the same time and where our resources go. Director Coleman says during this time, they validate the plans that are in place, they conduct training, they practice, and they take a look at the new robust systems that are in place. Now, the annual hurricane season ends on November 30th, and residents are encouraged to be prepared for tips on how to do just that. Go online to kmanprepare.gov.ky. Twenty people took part in the recent agro-processing workshop hosted by the Department of Agriculture in conjunction with the Scientific Research Council in Jamaica. On Friday, participants received their completion certif certificates after hearing from Department of Agriculture Assistant Director Brian Critchlow, who had this to say. Put on your business hat and take this to another level. For farmers, we are constantly in the Cayman Islands faced with gluts and scarcities. Right? In the mango season, it's amazing how much this little island produces in terms of mangoes and there's so much surplus and then what happens to it. Either you're selling it off cheap or you're trying to freeze it or trying to find a product. Peppers is another excellent example. Peppers are always cyclical. The same pepper crop is going to peak, it's going to dip, it's going to peak. And if you have a market where you have a supermarket that say wants to buy 500 pounds a week, if you plant to be able to consistently give the supermarket 500 pounds a week, then you're going to get weeks where you're producing a thousand pounds or fifteen hundred pounds and then what the heck are you going to do with it you know but if you can convert that into another product if you can find a way to preserve it you can now add value to your to your product to your farm and even if you're not a farmer but you see the opportunity you have the skill set then you can take on buying that product or partner with farmers and taking it again some topics covered over the five-day course included good manufacturing practices principles of agro-processing, food microbiology, as well as packaging and labeling. Participants were exposed to product development basics for pepper jelly, sauces, dry seasoning blends, juices, and fruit squash. We say congratulations to all of the participants. Well, this year's Miss Teen contestants joined reigning queen Isaiah Thomas and Lions and Leos for the annual culture and heritage visit to Kim and Brack on the weekend. Lion Andrea Franklin and the reigning Miss Teen Cayman Islands both say it was an amazing visit. A lot of them have not been to the Bragg, however, they love it. We take them on a tour. The first thing we do is a photo shoot. It's very important. They even get a test on it. They're getting a test on it next week, actually. But I say it's very important to know about your culture and your history on all three islands. This was the first year that the contestants stayed overnight on Kim and Brack. The trip was made possible by the Ministry of Tourism and the winner and runners-up will receive uh, scholarships from the Ministry of Education. Now, the pageant takes place on the 20th of August at the Lion Centre. Showtime is 7 p.m. The forecast tonight calls for partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of showers. Seas will be slight to moderate with wave heights of 2 to 4 feet. The outlook is for an increase in cloudiness and showers Tuesday night as a tropical wave moves into the Cayman Islands area. Now the synopsis calls for cloudiness and a few isolated showers which are expected to continue through this afternoon as a surface trough moves across our area. Radar images show scattered showers in and around the Cayman Islands area that are drifting towards the west. A reminder that you can find the latest on local weather conditions online at weather.gov.ky. And that ends today's news brief here on CIG Television. I'm Donna Bush, wishing you a safe and wonderful night.